Well, hello, friends. I'm uh, Michael with uh, M&M Model Railways. Uh, Michelle, my wife, makes up the other M. Uh, she will be in uh, uh, other videos, and you've already seen her in video unboxings as well. In this video, my friends, we're going to be uh, building that uh, um, N-scale barn back there. That's a hay barn. So we have a red barn that's the sale barn, and then we also have the... Uh, the hay barn that uh, the hay off of that hay field uh, is stored in that hay barn until uh, it's fed out. And then uh, um, the next uh, hay season, they'll be putting another uh, load of hay in there. So this video is all about building that hay barn. Let me point it out to you on the layout and uh, um, we'll go from there. This is the sale barn right here. This is... Uh, the hay barn that I built. Okay, if you want to see uh, how that's all uh, laid out, uh, please keep watching this video as we build it and install it on the train layout. Coming up next. So the first step in building a uh, hay barn is to answer a couple of questions. Number one, why do we need it? Number two, where is the best location to build it at? And number three, how are we going to build it? Well, the first uh, question is pretty easy. We need a, uh, a hay barn because we have uh, hay that uh, is setting out in the open and uh, hay has a tendency to, to rot when it gets wet. Well, originally this hay was harvested and came off of this field. And so they needed a place to put it so the new hay would grow underneath there. So, so what we need to do is we need to find a location that best fit where we're going to put it. A new haystack. So back in here is an area that uh, is adjacent to the... Uh, the sail barn. So what I've done is I've established a piece of wood that represents the foundation of where that's going to go. So we'll make that look like concrete and we'll start building our framework on top of that piece of wood. All that's coming up in this video. Keep watching. Next step of this uh, hay barn build is to take the hay and our foundation, which is a slab of concrete, that's a piece of wood, we're going to take that over to our kitchen table where we will start designing a piece of wood, haystack. And we've got to start making the uprights out of this piece of wood. Keep watching. Let's get on to the next step. So first thing I want to establish is a little bit more light. There we go. So with the arrow paint uh, pointing towards the uh, inlet, this backside is uh, facing towards the, a rail line that we need to give a little advance to. So this this hay is divided into how I purchased it in the kit, if you see my unboxing video. What I want to do is I want to set this hay on here, just like if I was going to... Uh, I'm actually going to glue that down eventually. Let me 
you got another shorter one that could be like where they're getting their their hay from I want to center all that in there they got these uh, little ones that uh, um, come with a kit too so those I would say seeing as if they were sitting on the top of these because uh, it's kind of how they planned them. So that one's got four going across it. That one's got two going across it. So I think that's the next one. So now that I've got my width and my height adjusted, I've established uh, a post that will clear the top of all this. But I want four more of these and I'm going to cut them out of this one here. So let me do that and I'll be right back. For me, the best way to cut these is with my utility knife with a sharp blade. I'm just going to scribe it all the way around and uh, turn a piece of wood over at the same time. Should be able to scrap it enough to pop it loose. So there's uh, one of the pieces. Don't worry about the jagged edges just yet. We'll, we'll, we'll address them in a minute. You can put a little bit of pressure on here and cut a little bit deeper too with your, with your blade. We just scrub it on four sides, you can uh, pop it loose. So, first things first, establish your four corner posts. Been a carpenter uh, since I was 12 years old, so that, that to me was about 40, 48 years ago. All right, now I got my four corner posts done, but what I want to do is I want to have a, a flat surface for each one of them. I'm just going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to just run both ends of the pieces that I just cut for the sandpaper. Make a little pile of the ones that you did. Trust me, you want uh, flat edges when you do the next step. Good idea to make sure that all your corner posts are the same height. Now, if you've got to trim them, now's the time to do it. So this is just like putting a 4x4 four four post in the ground. And i got one of them that just shows a little bit too long for my uh, assembly. And uh, take just a little bit of that edge off. Building this from scratch. Not a kit to do this. All right. Go ahead and sand that one. All right. Let's find our uh, arrow again. And this time I'm going to draw a little arrow out. Because I'm going to cover all that up. So that arrow there represents... Uh, that's going out uh, towards the uh, front. So now what we're going to do is place this back on here. And we're going to square it. But I don't want to square it so far in the back because, like I said, we have that... Uh, um, um, 
siding, that spur siding coming in here. So I don't want my roof all the way against that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some wood glue down here. bit for each post I think I can use that for all my posts and then I'm just gonna go set that on my corners I think I can use that as a dabber to get the glue Four corners can be straight. I'm not too worried about them. The biggest thing is going to be keeping these things straight. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to do that by leaning them up against a piece of wood. I'll be right back. These are probably the straightest things I have for blocks. All you got to do is Gently set it next to your piece of wood. Very carefully, just lean them back up against your pieces of wood. It'll help you with straightness. Want you can set something else over the top of them. Just kind of eyeball them to make sure that they're uh, level. You can spin your piece of wood if you want. Push that one back just a little bit. set something up against it to hold it up against your piece of wood if you want. I happen to have a candy bar in here. Works for that one. Butterfingers happens to be my second most favorite candy bar. gonna work all right remember the uh, way we had the arrows going now we need to set a 4x4 four four on top of there so just like any barn you would put a 4x4 four four going up there and I want to make them just flush so I'm gonna make a, a mark On my piece of wood here that's going to help it to uh, be straight and I think 
a measurement will work for my other one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out, and then I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do. All right, here we are in the next step. Don't forget to uh, sand your ends down of these uh, headers. All right, the next step you want to do is you want to put some uh, glue on top of your 4x4. Four four. I'll go ahead and do all, all four of them. A little bit of glue coming down off of that one, so let me get that off of there. All right. And the next thing is I want to set those uh, four by fours headers on top of these four by fours. That can be a little difficult because it's tiny stuff. All right, we are sitting there now. Let's get that back to where he belongs. Which is straight. Come on, get this straight. Set that a little bit more up here, I guess. That'll work. Let's get some of this glue off of this piece right here. Right where I'm going to put that piece at, and that'll work. And put this one here as well. Going out to the far end, use whatever you can to get that out to the far end. Move some of that glue. All right. All right. That's how it looks. Butterfingers kind of holding that side up. So make sure that those are standing pretty straight. It's going to make for a tall hay barn, but that's okay. Eventually I'll glue them in there. Now what I want to do is I want to make some trusses. So I'm going to go with ones that I think are the best reveal, which is this front one. Then I'm going to mark a little mark. Then I'm going to cut those off. And I'm going to make uh, three trusses. I'll be right back. My idea of making these trusses is to place them with a bit of an overhang. So if I carefully have enough of my things made here, I should be able to push this one back into place. That'll make me a pretty straight hay barn. All right, I got three of the bottom plates for the for the rafters or the, or for the trusses. So I want this to be a gabled roof. So what I want to do is I want to figure out where halfway point is. And in order to do that, I'm going to measure it out and then I'm going to mark them all the same. So uh, that gives you an idea of how those are going to sit on there. So let's go ahead and uh, get those built. All right, in order to do uh, a rafter, you need uh, three pieces. So 
you have a piece uh, right here. This is the first piece. So it's going to set like that. Let me move this out of the way. You can see better. That's going to set flat. And uh, as you can tell, I've got an angle coming down on both uh, ends of it. So you're going to set that down on its side. Then I have the center peak that also has uh, a point. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. That's also got two points. So we're going to set that with a point going down to each side. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of long stock. We're going to lay it the way we want it to go. And that's going to be our truss. But we want it to hang over the edge a little bit. Because we're going to put a, a fascia board on each side of it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it that long. I want to make sure that we're uh, going where we want to go. I've got a center mark on that piece of wood. And we'll throw another angle there. So what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to make a mark right at center and then we're going to make another mark going up there so we can put our fascia board on it so I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to cut enough to do my three trusses so let me get that done and uh, I'll be back shortly okay now that I got the uh, basic shape built let's see how it's going to get installed so both ends of this has uh, got an angle on it, and I've got my uh, center mark on there. So I'm going to put that down on there. Oh, where my center mark is at. These uh, ridge boards here, they have a slope coming down so they're straight. I'm going to put them like that. Then this other one's got a slope coming into it. I'm going to put it next to it. Like so. If you think that one of your pieces is too long, like uh, I see this piece is too long. This is angling down more. So... Another thing you can do there is uh, angle them up again, make sure that uh, they're the same length. They look like they're pretty much the same length. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that together. So my angles are going the right direction. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll... Uh, Put them in place. And I'm going to glue it down and then I'm going to make the other two and I'm going to follow that pattern. So I'll be right back. Now there's my first uh, gable truss. I'm going to build uh, two more like it. And uh, everything's all on this angle like I wanted it to be. I'll do a little bit more trimming down here when the glue sets. So. I'm going to use that as a pattern and I'm going to set my other pieces onto it as I get ready to uh, to make those. So I'm going to let that dry really good and then uh, I'll be back to uh, make uh, two more of them and then we'll set them on top of the 4x4 structure we built. Be back soon. Well there's the three uh, gable parts of the roof right there. I think before I install them, I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint the inside of my hay barn here and then get these uh, haystacks glued down so they don't move around in there anymore.
so I won't be able to reach them as well as I could. At the ends, it's going to look like a concrete. I'm going to use uh, concrete uh, um, top coat to go ahead and paint that. So I'll go ahead and get that painted, and then we'll be back in just a little bit. Wasn't that about the cutest thing you've seen? I've got the uh, concrete floor painted. I've glued the haystacks in place. And I've got the uh, first truss up on there. I'm going to go ahead and do the second truss, which will be this end of it. And then I'm going to let it dry really good before I put the middle one on there. Brush that glue from uh, the bottle. I don't have to get so much on there at one time. Well, there it is. There's the Front and the back of it. I'm going to leave that uh, dry now. And tomorrow, which will be another day, I'll come and I'll put the uh, middle one in place. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do after that. As long as nobody bumps anything, that should sit up and dry just fine. There's the front of it. All right, tune back in tomorrow. So now, as you can see in this video, I decided to change the. Uh, the height of the uh, trusses to be more shallow and then maybe it wouldn't be so big on the uh, train layout. The uh, next thing I want to do is I want to put uh, a um, what we call a fascia on the side of it. So I'm going to put a fascia right here and I'm going to put a fascia on this other side and then I'm going to put some roof material on it. So I need to find out what that measurement is and uh, um, get started putting that on there. So I got some uh, really narrow uh, um, strip wood. Um, I'm gonna make that as the uh, um, fascia. So let me get that started and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Now as you can see, I got the uh, fascias on it. And when they uh, dry, I'll start putting the roof on it. I want the, uh, the roof to come down over this, not to stop it in them. We have a piece of uh, roof material. Put it right there, see? That's how I'll start it, and then I'm going to put shingles on it. See? I'll be back to show you how I did the roof here in a minute. As you can see, I got the roof on what I'm calling the back side. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and get our roof put on the... Uh, front side. Took some glue and Lay your piece over it. 
And I'm going to go ahead and cover up the uh, full part of it. The background now as you're hearing is my uh, air conditioner coming on. It's like 100 degrees here in um, the northern part of Colorado. Or, uh, almost the end of June 2021. It's a little wider on that side, so we'll put that kind of like so. I'll go ahead and make a mark right here. Cut that so it's coming to a line there. Let's put this one right here. All right. That's the back part of it. No, that's the front part of it because it's going to be molded here and they've been getting their hay out of this pile here. Now I have some uh, shingles I'm going to put on here. Now the question is, is do I finish off this face up here? I could easily do that with uh, some strips of my, my wood that I have here. So what's your thoughts? Should I go ahead and put a piece of wood on there or leave that exposed? Let's uh, look for some uh, pictures of some uh, hay barns that uh, are already built. I'll put some pictures of some hay barns that I found uh, on the screen. I'll be right back. Well, as you can tell, we uh, have a rough couple of end faces uh, for the overhangs on here. What I want to do is I want to add a, a fascia to the uh, ends of this and so it doesn't come flush with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of my railing material or my post material I'm just going to add a piece onto the end of it. So then when I put my fascia material on it, it uh, will adhere a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with my first angles. These angles need to follow the same angle as uh, the roof that I built. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those angles and then I'll, I'll establish uh, the other ends here in a little bit. So let me uh, go ahead and cut these and uh, I'll show you how they kind of turned out. So here's the... Uh, Subfascia installed. Move that up so it's a little bit more of an alignment right there. So that's the uh, front side. That's the back side. Now what I want to do is I want to establish a uh, an outer fascia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of paper as a cardboard template and uh, get that so it's going to be perfect size of what I'm looking for and then I'm going to cut this at an angle and then I'm going to cut four pieces of that out of my stock wood and then it should uh, form a nice uh, fitting oh, that piece fell off Let's Put it back on there. That makes it easier if I just leave it setting flat until that glue sets up. That sound that you're hearing is my AC running again. I'm also going to put some shingles on, on this also. I'll be able to see how I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. All right, that's uh, that so far. Let's uh, keep uh, plugging away and let's come back as I get uh, this pattern a little bit 
made a little bit better and we'll get in them installed. Check back in a minute. Well, I got the fascia and subfascia on the uh, end of it. I'll be painting this red and this red and the post red and then the underside of it red uh, before I put the shingles on it. Um, I need to uh, probably remove this fascia right here so I can uh, put a new one across there because that's going to be visible and probably do the same thing on this side because I, I want it to run over this um, edge right here. So I'm redoing, redoing that fascia, redoing that fascia. So that's what the top looks like. I like it like that uh, as it goes uh, pretty close to what I wanted. Let's do a little bit more work and I'll show you what I'm doing next. All right, let's put this other fascia on here. As you can tell, I do have shingles on one side. So I'm just going to butter glue, I guess I call it buttering with the glue. This side of the overhang. Then we'll set this one right on that edge. Make sure it lines up with everything. And just leave it set like that for a little bit. I'll look at both sides of it, make sure that uh, it's lined up correctly where we want it to be. It could be down just a little bit, but it needs to be even with that roof. All right. As you can tell, that fish is now in place. So what I do is just butter some of this wood glue to help it stay in place. You get it really thin, so you're going to put the shingles right over the top of it anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this glue dry. And then uh, that'll set up, and then uh, as you can tell, my my center pieces of my roof is uh, going over a little bit. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to come back with uh, my utility knife, and then I'll uh, cut that middle edge. I also got to make a ridge cap. I'm going to cut a little narrow piece and put it right there, and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Now let me rotate this so you can see kind of what I've got done so far. A little bit of gap right there, a little bit of gap right there, but I think I'm going to take some wood filler and fill that in. I'm going to paint it anyway, so I think it'll all blend in. This side's looking pretty good. I don't really want to pop him off of there and redo that. It's just a model. I'm not really going to see it as tiny as it is. <clears throat> My next thing I need to do is put shingles uh, on this side, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I'm going to use my utility knife, but uh, you want to start this out with a really sharp blade. See what's sharp and what's not. I'm just going to put a new blade in there. to just fold it a little bit so I can see that middle crease. I'm just going to cut See how that looks. They're not cutting through it. Well, maybe scissors. Keep them as close to that edge as I can. There's a reason for it, because I'm going to put a ridge cap over it. I 
that did a pretty good job. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, let's clean that off. Try to start doing that. Just do a little glue. I usually just dump a little bit of it. Pour. I always say dump, but. Then uh, when we did our big red barn, the kit came with uh, some of the shingles that we're using. So as you can tell, I got a, a pile of them. We uh, actually painted them and uh, rusted them a little bit to make them look uh, aged. And we've got uh, a whole uh, bag full of them right there as well. So I'm just going to brush some glue up there. I think we can go all the way up on it this side this time. Because we know where those are going to be at. I find that it's easier just to do one at a time instead of trying to put a whole bunch down it. Just overhang just a little bit. Get that out there on that edge. Then I think I'll go ahead and put my next piece on here. This is like metal sheeting, metal roofing sheets that you'd put on a barn roof. I've done several of them. So make sure it's straight when you do it. This is the most critical part of it, I think. That's basically how I'm going to do it. Gonna keep on uh, trucking up the roof. I'm gonna go ahead and some glue down over it because we're going to cover up that seam just like you would in a real life scenario. All right, you get the idea of it. Let me do one more path for you, then I'll finish it off camera. Be very, 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 very steady. Just do one more right here. All right, my friends, that's how I'm going to do it the rest of the way. Then I'll cut that metal. That ridge again, like I did before. As straight as you can, because once your glue sets, that's just the way it's going to be. All right. That's very good. All right, let me finish the shingles. Well, all right. Uh, I pretty much got both sides of that roof shingled. I've got my uh, fascias uh, filled in pretty good there. I think that looks pretty good. Now we pan around it a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is put a ridge cap on this metal roof. It's like you would in, uh, in real life. I had some uh, extra material left over when we built the sail barn, so I'm going to put that right there. So how I'm going to install it is I'm going to take some 
glue out of my bottle here and I'm going to paint a little line of glue that so that piece will hold down a ridge cap on the top and that's that's white and that's perfect because the trim uh, on our other barn is also white so I have to make a decision about how I'm going to paint this barn because I want to paint it yet I don't want it to just be setting there without uh, anything on it because it belongs to a shipping and receiving cattle company so it's got to it's got to have some value to it all right this is a um, has a little bit of a outside corner to it Make sure she's centered up really good and then probably should have used some clear glue on that, but it's okay. I'll just hold it for a few minutes till that glue dries, but like I said, this is the front of it uh, where they uh, will back up. They've been uh, getting uh, hay from this pile. These are piles that they put in there. That's a whole hay season run. That's three... Uh, cuttings of the grass that they're that they're using so we'll, we'll discuss how we're going to paint this I already painted that concrete so we'll let that dry and then we'll uh, go from there and uh, see uh, how it's going to look after it's painted that'll be my next step keep watching well the next step here is we're going to do some painting we're going to try to match the uh, paint schematic that we did on our uh, red barn which the body of it was red and then the trim around it was white it still is so uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to paint everything inside the red four by fours will be red and then the uh, fascia itself will be uh, white so first thing i want to do is start working up inside here some of you might be thinking why are you uh, painting up inside there well maybe we should have painted this before we put the roof on there but the simple fact is is uh, when we're uh, setting down on our on our bar chairs at the train layout looking up we're gonna see this under part also when we are uh, taking videos or pictures We'll, we'll also see that. So I think that's uh, an important factor. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint uh, everything red that I want to paint. And I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like after we get done with the red stuff. See you in a bit. Well, I finally finished uh, painting the red. As you can tell, it's... Uh, the inner part's completely red all the way around it. I even painted the bottom edge of the fascia red. I don't know why, just because. So this is the uh, feet outside where they're going to go to pull the hay out. This side up here goes against the back mountain canyon area against the stream. This is this side goes against a uh, a spur line for passenger pickup. So what I'm going to be doing now is, uh, you already tell I've got a white uh, ridge cap there, but I'm going to paint uh, white all around this fascia here. I think that'll match um, the big red barn. So uh, I'm going to use some uh, acrylic uh, um, pure white paint, as you can see there. Put a little bit in my paint tray here. And I don't know which one will be better, bigger brush or little brush, but I'm just going to start painting it. Now 
My air conditioner just kicked on. It's right behind me. Furnaces. This may take several coats of paint. I'll take the uh, little brush and go ahead and paint that underside, just the edge that comes down. Very delicate detailed painting. Put a second coat over that. I'll probably come back and put several coats over it just to try to feather it in. Let's do uh, this side of it now. Hey, that looks pretty good, huh? All right, let me got to paint the edge of the fascia all the way around it, uh, as you can see there. So I'll uh, go ahead and finish that and get it all painted, and we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. Now we have the final product. It looks like a really nice uh, um, hay barn. And here we are back to the loadout side. Let me show you this a little up closer. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go see what it looks like on the train layout. Let's go ahead and install it on its permanent place. I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue down here. That's where she's gonna set. Make sure we have the sides going out. We're setting in there. Now we are for sure, huh? You're pop down in there. All right, that's the permanent home of the, the hay barn. Let me give you a little bit of a tour all the way around it. There's a car height view, or maybe from a standing view. So I enjoy. Uh, being able to put that camera down in the uh, size variances makes it look pretty cool, I think. You can have the ability to maneuver your phone about the level of the product there. 
That's pretty amazing. These passenger cars, they go right back there in that area. Let's uh, see them slowly, slowly. Hopefully, I won't derail them. Passenger pickups back in there. Goes by there just perfect. You'll see the passenger pickup is that, it'll be that concrete area back there. So I think that's, uh, that's going to be a wrap. That looks pretty, pretty amazingly cool. I think we almost got, uh, shipping and receiving cattle company almost done we have to put some uh, more cattle in there and we're going to have to put some of that fencing around there in case those cows get out in this main area we don't want a cow getting out on the road and getting um, hit by a car we're also going to be putting a barbed wire fence around this uh, hay field because they put cows out there in the winter time to graze on that grass so we can fertilize it. So, there you go. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to give us a like and hit that uh, share button as well, and share this with your friends. And keep watching. There's going to be many, many, many more videos that you'll be able to see on the layout build. Let's watch our little steam train run around here.